Very recently, I had a chance to sit down and finally play Ukulele. This is a game that was pitched as a Kickstarter, advertised, and designed to model the 3D platformer or 3D mascot platformer era of the late 90s, early thousands. And in that aspect, the game succeeds on all fronts. If this game came out 15, 16 years ago, it would probably get a solid 8.5 or 9 out of 10. But playing it today, I kind of had this feeling that it just didn't feel like I was really playing this game. It felt like I was doing something that I've done many times before. It's that same feeling that I had when I played through Mega Man 11 last month. That the game, from a technical and gameplay standpoint, was good, but nothing was really holding my attention to it in the same way when I play something like Diablo, Dark Souls, uh, Spelunky, Buying of Isaac, any of these other games that have came out in that time period. And it gives me a very interesting topic I want to talk about for today's Industry Insight. And that is, is a safe game still good these days? And by safe, I mean something that we've seen it all before. I don't want to use the term paint by numbers that I did on my Discord because I think that may be considered too insulting. But what I'm talking about is a game that basically it hits every mark that it was designed for. It was basically meant to emulate or evolve a kind of design without going too much out of its unique viewpoint. And we've seen games like this, especially in the AAA and mobile space. In a post I'm writing alongside this video, as we've said, AAA game industry is very much hit driven. And these hits pretty much define or redefine what's considered the popular genre for many different parts of our generations. For instance, the platformer mascot genre was pretty much it from the late 80s to we could already say maybe mid 90s before it was then taken over by the 3D platformer genre. Then in the early thousands, we saw the open world genre. That gave way to the first person shooter genre. And today we're seeing a lot more in terms of a narrative or story driven experience. And of course, lots and lots of battle royale. And on the mobile side, we see this with many brand or mascot driven games, gotcha design, and that's another topic we could easily segue into. But the point is, when it comes to the AAA market, this is where we see many developers follow an established formula. Again, how many first person shooters have we have played over this past decade that have featured perks, some kind of RPG prestige system, and of course lots of killstreaks. And pretty much I just described the entire Call of Duty franchise for the last 8 years. And not only that, but with the open world genre, we of course have seen Assassin's Creed, God of War, even of course very lately with Red Dead Redemption. But the point is, when the AAA market gets a safe bet when it comes to a popular genre, you know all the big name developers are going to copy it. We, in a few days ago from this recording, I did a video about Blizzard, and how we talked about how Blizzard is one of the best companies at iterating on design, but not innovating. And that's where the AAA market tends to get very interesting. Because as we've said, there are plenty of open world games, first person shooters, team based MOBAs, etc, etc. But what makes these games try to stand out is that little X factor that comes through development. Again, the quote unquote Blizzard magic is real and is a major part of Blizzard's success over the last 20 years. Of course, same could be said of Nintendo and when Valve ever decides to put out games, as we've seen. But many games tend to follow the same notes beat by beat. We, have of course, have made that very funny video about the Yupin world design and how so many open world developers are mirroring the Assassin's Creed formula. We can of course talk about Call of Duty and its impact on FPS single and multiplayer. But the point is, for a lot of AAA developers, they definitely go for more the play it safe side, but then invest heavily in the aesthetics and theme. Right now, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2 is lighting up sales charts, and will probably, I think it's going to take the new world record for most expensive game to have been made. 
And again, from a design standpoint, the individual elements we've seen before. I mean, hell, we saw with Red Dead Redemption 1. But again, it's all the additional factors, the aesthetics, the graphics, you name it, that elevate that game. We could certainly say the same thing about the games from Nintendo. Again, Super Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and even stuff like Splatoon, these are games, at least at their basic layer, that we've seen in some way, shape, or form from other studios. Team-based shooters, open-world adventure, 3D platformer, you get the picture. But what Nintendo does differently with its aesthetics and the subtleties of its design are what keep people playing and coming back for more. But the point is that these genres tend to fall into the same ruts. I've said this before, but I have no interest in picking up another Call of Duty, a Battlefield, or even stuff of the fighting game genre, because I've seen them before and nothing else is going to make me interested. If I didn't care for Street Fighter V, why should I care about a, you know, there's probably going to be a Street Fighter VI at some point. But by proxy, do I care about Injustice 2, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, uh, Soul Calibur 6, etc., etc., like that? And this is why, for a lot of people, including myself, we've turned to the independent scene, where we have seen those very unique and original games. And if I did my job right, the thumbnail art for this video featured a very unique game, which could, I think basically be described as Bath Salts the Video Game. But the point is that the independent space has flourished thanks to its focus on unique and original games. Again, stuff that we won't be seeing on the AAA side. As a good case in point, the developer behind Papers, Please just released a, almost a DOS-style graphics game called uh, The Return of the Obra Din, which I can tell you with 100% certainty that that is not a game that's going to be published by Activision Blizzard anytime soon. And while this is all well and good, as we've said before, there is that balance between refinement and uniqueness. And this is where AAA developers tend to get away with featuring the same kind of designs and where independent developers tend to struggle with. But with that said, let's load up some game footage and we'll talk a little bit more about this challenge of trying to make somebody care about a game they've already seen. But before we do that, a quick word to our Patreon supporters. And now a quick shout out to the supporters over on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. So here we have footage of Ukulele, which at this point is, I think, more considered a double A game rather than an independent one. But I want everyone to take notes as to kind of the movement and general gameplay that you're watching during the segment. Because this leads into, or this is kind of the reason for this video. Ukulele plays it safe in terms of its design. It features many of the basic blueprints that we saw the 3D mascot genre as we've talked about in the last section. And it really doesn't strive or do anything else with it. The game has a good look to it, it has great music, but again, there's nothing here that we haven't seen before. And when we contrast that with the rest of the independent scene, we get into that discussion about iteration, or I'm sorry, refinement, versus uniqueness. I have played at this point more unique games than I can count. And for those of you who are longtime fans, let me just say you have not seen all the games that I've played. Because there are plenty of indie games that I've gotten press keys for or just picked up on my own that I did not record any footage on or wrote a review for. Because they annoyed me or they frustrated me so much that I didn't want to cover them. And that's, again, the big sticking point when we talk about these kinds of games. That just because your game is one of a kind doesn't mean it's going to attract a fan base, especially if there are elements that don't work. Maybe the controls aren't responsive. Maybe there's technical issues or bugs. Maybe just your entire UI is poor. But these are issues that are becoming more and more damning as we're seeing so many games being released. And it's the flip side of the issue that when we talk about safe games. 
why should I play your umpteenth first person shooter when I have Call of Duty? Why should I play your farming sim if I have Stardew Valley? And we're really seeing this in all walks of the game industry that consumers want more elements, but at the same time, they still want a quality experience. And this has always been that push between the AAA and the independent developing studios. A AAA company can put out games like Call of Duty, Red Dead Redemption, uh, Breath of the Wild, and so on. And while they may still feature similar elements to other games, the polish and level refinement is so great that you don't care that you've played something like it before. The problem I have with ukulele here is that it is so much set in its ways that it doesn't try to do enough things different that, again, why should I play this game when I have other titles to look at? Or, heck, I could even go back and play something like Mario Odyssey and get an even better or a more unique experience. And a lot of the issues that we talk about has to do with the devil is in the details. Again, if I show you footage of Mario Odyssey right now and put it side by side, most casual observers will say, yeah, they're the same design. It's You're doing the same thing. But a lot of the technical aspects of playing Mario Odyssey are vastly superior to ukulele. But with that said, back to our major point about this kind of playing it safe is that independent developers have hit that point where they're no longer the unique or one-of-a-kind game out there. Again, we have uh, go back to late thousands, maybe early this decade, a independent developer putting out even just a good game was considered a monumental achievement. Again, something like Cave Story or Braid really came out of nowhere and shocked mainstream audiences. Now we look at today, and every day we're getting at least 10 to 20 games easily from the independent space. And it's not just unique games anymore, we're seeing developers all try and make the next platformer, or the next survival game, or and of course right now, the next Battle Royale. And it's really putting, I think, a lot of people in an awkward spot. Do you try and create something completely original, but at the same time hurt your chances in refinement, or do you try and make your take on a popular game? As we've talked about in many of our streams, it is very risky to copy the king, because you are not just competing with the number one game of that genre, you are competing with every other developer making a game like that. And in a recent live stream we did with Tim Ruswick of Game Dev Underground, we talked about how we both see a lot of Battle Royale focused studios are probably going to be going under in the next year or so by not being able to find an audience. And again, it always comes back to the, this issue of playing it safe or striving on your own. Right now, I will bet that most of you watching this video right now are either thinking about making a small or a specialized game, or have already started working on it. And a lot of developers struggle with that idea of, do I make something that we've already seen before? Can I make the next FTL or the next Stardew Valley, or do I try to go 100% original and kind of bank on the uniqueness and nothing else to work? And both strategies have major risks and can easily doom a studio if you go all in on that approach. And this takes me back to the original question for this video, and we'll begin to wrap it up here. Should, or I'm sorry, does playing it safe and working with an established genre and not pretty much rocking the boat, is that worse than making a game that may not be the best game, but is still different from everything else out on the market? And I want to get your thoughts on this in the comments below, because I think this is going to be one where there may be an interesting skewing, depending upon your own thoughts and your consumer trends. I think for a lot of people who focus on the independent scene, 
you will probably say that uniqueness is better than high quality. But if you're someone who spends a lot of your time playing double A or triple A games, you may want that polished experience. That I know when I load up this game that yes, I may be playing another platformer or another first person shooter, but I'm not going to have to worry about the game crashing, the UI being poor. I can get in, start playing, and get into that feedback loop and enjoy for how many hours this game is. And there is nothing wrong with that. But as we continue to see developers and budgets grow, it's going to become harder, I feel, for games to stand out. For people who do decide to play it safe, they're going to have to push things in another area. Maybe the aesthetics or the branding, which again, art costs a lot of money. And for independent developers who focus on unique experiences, they're going to need to do more in terms of the presentation and the playability. You can't just put a game out there without doing any playtesting anymore and expect people to enjoy it. But before this rant continues for another 30 minutes, let's end things here. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to suggest a topic for a future piece, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And if you'd like to get your name on our Patreon thank you page, check out patreon.com slash jwbicer. But that's it for this video. I'll see everyone in our next piece. Until then, take care. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design. And come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.